Hey guys, it's Demo from Demostech and today we're installing an NVIDIA GT730. For those who know me, I don't play games. Seriously, I only play sometimes some simple games and very rare I play some more advanced games, more newer games but usually I'm not exactly a gamer. Now, I do like games, but it's just not my thing, probably. I prefer to do other stuff. And for that reason, I have never invested in any advanced GPU for my computer. For me, the main reason to invest in a GPU actually isn't gaming, but video editing. So for example, this video, after I finish shooting it, I'll have to edit it in Adobe Premiere and then render it, etc. And in order to do that, I need a pretty powerful GPU. And since I don't have any, I use my onboard. Now I have an Intel 4th generation something something, so I think it's Intel HD 4600 or something. And because of that, when I render a video for example, a video that would take someone else with a GPU to render about in 2 minutes or something will take me about 20 minutes. Now, it's not too important for me. I mean, usually I schedule my uploads a few days ahead and everything is fine. But in some cases it's really annoying and again, I do play games sometimes. So lately I've been playing Just Cause 3. If you would like to play something uh, a little bit like GTA but uh, with kind of cool graphics and with an open map that you can go wherever you want, you could pretty much do the whole game and a lot of damage without even shooting any bullets since the guy in the game named Rico has uh, a cool grappling hook and it's pretty fun and awesome to just glide in the air in that game. Anyway. I did some GPU sort of performance, which you can see right now. This is my onboard sort of benchmark, so you can see it's pretty much on very low, I'd say. Now, the game works, and I only checked the Just Cause for FPS, so the FPS goes about between 11 FPS to 15 FPS. And probably if uh, you are a gamer watching this video, you will be puking by now or something like that. But that's how I play. I mean, I'm not exactly trying to play very advanced games or anything. It's just for fun and that's good enough for me basically. Obviously I would love to run it on full quality and everything and with better performance, but that's good enough for me just to play. In terms of uh, my video settings in the game, I think most of them are on pretty low, though I don't really remember and seriously I didn't ever care about that that much. The game looks awesome even on the low settings, so that's fine for me. But about a few days ago I found this. This is a GT730. I have no idea exactly from which company it is, I think it's, it doesn't right here anywhere. but. Let's, let's try to look closely. I hope you can see it. So this is a GT730, 2 gigs of RAM, GDR5, 64-bit, CRT, DVI, HDMI. Uh, made in China. Now, I have no idea which company makes this video card, but it has some good output for me, so I use particularly HDMI. It has VGA and DVI as well, and it should be good for me, I mean, probably it will be still better, although it's very old, it will be better than my Intel onboard HD 4600, I think. I have nothing to say about that video card rather than it's old. It's been used in one of our work computers in the past, I asked for permission to test it out, and I'm going to test it out and in case it works better, maybe I'll ask to leave it or just buy the card and that's it. Anyway, let's go ahead and install it into our computer. So you've probably all seen my computer in the video where I had to replace my motherboard and it's dusty again, but 
that's what it is. So let's go ahead and turn it around a little and open our case. So nothing has changed, only the dust probably. Let's try to get the camera a little bit closer. Well, that should be pretty fine, I think. Sadly, I don't have my other lens around, so we'll have to manage like that. So sadly, now I just remember that I have to take one of the panels here that sort of blocks the air from the outside, from all the dust. And thankfully, in that case, I can remove them and also install them back. So let's see, since I didn't install any video card for like, I don't know, at least two years, I have totally forgot which ports are those, I mean, it's AGP or PCIe or something, I forgot how it's called, I forgot how they look, and seriously, I am not even sure if it will fit, but I do see um, that I have here the exact thing that I need to, you know what, let me try to get another shot from my phone, so you can get sort of two side views. Hopefully it will be good in the edit. Okay, so this is sort of another view of uh, the computer. And basically what I meant is that I have no idea how is that port called. Let's see, it's probably, oh yeah, it's PCIe X16. So I believe it should be good for us. I mean, the card seems to be fitting into this port. Let me try to, well, I have to work with one hand. so. This is the panels that I've been talking about that you probably can both remove and install back. So let's unscrew that. Okay, and let's try to, okay. The, as you can see, you can install it back whenever you want with a screw. Very simple, very convenient. And I believe the only thing that we need to do is sort of go like this. And you know what, let's, let me see if you can, yeah, you can view that. But you know what, we can actually add some light, I believe. Nope, we cannot, since I don't have enough battery. Okay, boom, and we have here, like, sort of, uh, a little plug or something like that. Let's see that, okay, it seems hooked. Um, now, I'm not really sure that I want to screw it back, but you know what, let's do that. Uh, this will prevent me from losing the screw, so why not? Now, the only thing that I need to do now is remember to put my HDMI cable not on the onboard here, but on the HDMI on the card. This will be the only thing that will change for me now in the connection. So let me install back the computer and check what's going on. So now that we have installed the card, I'm going to the same benchmark. It's called user benchmark. I have no idea what it is. Seriously, I just found it uh, that it's free instead of some others that are actually not free. I've never knew that benchmark apps uh, cost money and actually a lot of money sometimes. Anyway, the only thing that I changed is installing the card, connecting my uh, screen to the HDMI of the card instead of the onboard, and I installed the drivers. Now, installing the drivers is very, very important. What I did is basically went to the manage devices of the computer and found the sort of generic driver that was pre-installed by Windows and did an online update. Now Windows 10 can recognize your GPU in no time and download and install automatically the driver and that's pretty much it. Currently we are ready to test the benchmark so let's go ahead and do the same benchmark that I did before with the same benchmark software. Uh, it goes pretty simple, you cannot change almost anything here, it basically benchmarks almost everything, but we're interested most in our graphics in the GPU. So click run, and it will go through some things. Um, later on you'll see some sort of screens that flash and uh, do the GPU benchmark. Pretty simple, nothing very special. 
just want to note that all the apps that were running in the background in the previous benchmark are running pretty much the same this time as well. Nothing really changed. Uh, it's pretty much the same. Uh, the computer was rebooted. Okay, here's the GPU. So finally we are testing the GPU, so you'll see a few screens flashing. Uh, I have no idea if it will be faster or anything than it was before. I have no idea if it will look better. Currently it pretty much seems the same with the same speed. Uh, so I have no idea if that test is somehow different or not. Uh, I think there were less screens in the previous scan. And that's pretty much it. And if the graphics uh, on the onboard GPU were on 14%, now it's uh, 17. So let's click on graphics. Uh, yeah, so it does recognize that we use an NVIDIA GeForce GT 730. Uh, we can see some specs here. So as I said, run 2 gigs. And it's terrible again, pretty much the same as it was before. So I wouldn't say that it's any better. Let me pause the video and test the frame rate on the Just Cause 3 game. Now I won't show you the Just Cause game because uh, I'm not really sure if I'm allowed to show the game. So I don't want to go through all that hassle and I'll just skip that part and I'll tell you in the end the results. Well, I am back from the game. Oh, wow, I have never expected that. Well, let me uh, explain what happened. So, first of all, the FPS went a little bit up. Not too much, I mean very little. Uh, you know what, let me show you just what happened. So, this is basically the stats from before those two, and the last one is from now. So. We went at the beginning between 10 and 15 uh, or something like that FPS. After the upgrade to the Nvidia card, we went between 14 and 20. Now obviously it's a little bit better, but there are different things that I've noticed. When I was playing with the onboard card, which is indeed by the way checked Intel HD 4600, I was playing in, I don't know, there was some delay, I mean, if you would watch, you know, a movie before the next mission or something like that, you would see that there is a delay and the sound and the video aren't in sync. And same goes for the game, it's a little bit, feels a little bit slower, it's saying something like that. The first thing that I noticed is when I launched the game, it was perfectly smooth. Seriously, it was very smooth, I didn't know that that game actually can be that smooth. So I did something that I will probably regret. I went to the graphic settings and set everything to maximum, to very high, etc. And then we dropped back to our between 10 and 15 FPS. Well, it was basically the same FPS again. It wasn't that smooth again, but the quality was on the highest and it looked really, really nice. And I must say, well, if I set it again to the lowest quality, it still looks nice. So I wouldn't waste so much resources on just cranking up all the settings to max, just to play it on the max and with lower FPS and with bigger delay. I'll probably get back to a little bit lower quality, maybe medium or so, and continue playing with the new card. Now, I can say that the card obviously works a little bit better, and there's a small other advantage that I didn't think before, but now I realized it. When I was using the onboard, I set it to as high as possible to use RAM. I mean, the onboard doesn't have almost none of RAM by its own, it uses your RAM of the computer, which isn't that good for your computer obviously, because you have less RAM. So it's very important in my case since I use for example Google Chrome and many other apps that consume lots of memory. 
So now that I have that NVIDIA card, I basically can go to the BIOS and lower the RAM to minimum that is being used by my onboard card. Basically, I can turn off anything related to the onboard card and everything will just work the same. But I'll have more resources for the computer itself or anything else. So the card does that advantage as well. Now, sadly, I will know the full potential of that card, or no potential at all, only after I'll edit this video. So I will probably add my notes about the card and the rendering from Adobe Premiere in the description of the video, so you can watch them down there. And only after that video, or maybe another one afterwards, I will be able to decide if I actually want to keep this card or there's no reason to keep it at all. Anyway, stay tuned for more updates about that card or any other card that I'll choose to go up next. Maybe in the end I will be convinced to actually buy a GTX something and actually invest some money in a great video card. Though I really doubt it since I don't really have much use for that. Thank you for watching this Demostech episode. If you enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button and hit the bell so you won't miss any future video. And I'll see you on the next one.